Hi everyone. As I've said before, I will never ask for any financial assistance on this channel, but I will ask that you take a moment after the video to witness these two wonderful acts of God I am about to share. I'm reaching out for some support and assistance for our brother in Christ, Johnny Newkirk. Johnny has an incredible testimony, a true life of overcoming trial and adversity through drugs and addictions to losing literally everything, including his family and his possessions. Yet throughout it all, he found God, picked up his Bible, and has since been doing missionary work in Uganda and helping to do the Lord's work in spite of all he has been faced with. Johnny is just starting to raise money to be full-time in Uganda and to continue his work. So I ask, if inclined, can you please help support a true spirit-filled brother in Christ? Any amount, no matter how small, will greatly help to see this wonderful act of God fulfilled. Let's help Johnny reach his goal, for it is clearly God's will for his life. Another group that is close to my heart is Light of God in Darkness. They're doing some amazing work in Kenya and across the world. True soldiers for Christ at the grassroots level, working in the communities to strengthen their resolve and helping the needy in any way that they can. Please support these wonderful sisters in Christ and once again, no matter, no amount is too small. For those of us that live in abundance, let us help another. Praise God for his workers. Glory to God and Maranatha. Good morning guys. Um, have another uh, written word for you today. Uh, I wrote this out this morning, so I hope um, whoever whoever this is for, I hope you receive it, and I hope this blesses your day. God truly is amazing. He watches us wrestle for understanding, yet He is so kind and loving that He will give us hints and lead us to revelation or further understanding. The thing is, it is easy to miss many of these subtle hints, clues, or occurrences happening in our life. As I have shown on this channel, it could be a book lying on a bed, a poster on the wall, a person that gives you an unexpected gift. It could even be something that initially seems bad that brings forth something wonderful in your life. He blesses us through this act, through the very act of love and care. We must remind ourselves to not overlook just how special this love truly is. After yesterday's video, I was thinking on the once saved always saved doctrine. I noticed a few subscribers had left the channel, and I pondered who they might be. You see, truth is piercing. It hurts. When we are convicted or reminded of something, it can be embarrassing. It can lead us to put our, up our shields and not allow free thought to flow. In our human idiocy, we challenge on right and wrong. Yet in the Bible, we are warned not to create conflict. And just to add, you know, it's it saddens me to see people leave this channel, but it's just a truth. It's a it's a, it's a thing that will happen, and it has happened. Um, but you know, that's just part of part of this is that we're not always going to agree with the message. Um, you know, it's not always um, up to the messenger to um, be concerned, other other than they have a job to do and pass on the message. So. The message might come from a direct word, words from God. It might come through the Holy Spirit. You know, it might come from relaying a dream. There are many different ways it can come. But it's up to you as the viewer to discern uh, where that message is coming from and that it's not just coming from the person, okay? All right. So Job 6 reminds us, uh, Job 6 verse 24, Teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words, but what do th what doeth your arguing reprove? Do ye imagine to reprove words in the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as wind? Ye, ye overwhelm the fatherless, and ye dig a pit for your friend. Now therefore be content, look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. Proverbs 13.1 also says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Okay, so we shouldn't ignore a rebuke if it comes our way. Um, you know, recently I had a one of God's prophets, you know, approach me and and you know gently remind me of something, and you know I took it to prayer, but I didn't actually I didn't listen as as well as I should have. I questioned it, um, and you know I, I questioned, it, took it to prayer, but it turned out you know I carried on and I should have stopped, 
and waited for an answer. And so, you know, that's a, that I got rebuked for that. And that's rightly so, you know, justified. But it taught me a great lesson and it taught me that I knew that that was one of God's prophets. I knew in my heart and to listen to my discernment. So part of carrying our cross is allowing others to help us when we stumble. I, for one, have had to learn this lesson many times, sometimes the hard way. I'm an independent person, a loner, yet I must not be pr- prideful and allow others and, and not allow others to help me up off the ground, shall I find myself there. When we share the truth with each other, it is not always well received. Why? Well, for the most part, humans tend to find learning the Bible boring or overwhelming. Therefore, they would rather spend their time on other things. Sometimes they just don't like what we're putting down. But the way of the true way of the true Christian is the way of learning. Is the way of learning. While we are often tired and it can be a struggle to pick up the Bible some days, we keep coming back. Piece by piece we unravel the teachings. It takes time. You could spend forty years learning the Bible, or three years. The 40-year studier would argue they, of course, know it better. But if they argue this, they are being prideful and don't practice what the Bible teaches. You see the the discrepancy? We must be careful. We must be careful not to stand up on a high horse at any time. Anyone can teach from the Bible, regardless of how long they have read for. Thus, this creates a problem. Anyone can string together any teaching from the Bible and have it resonate with others. That is... Others without the Holy Spirit, of course. So we must be careful. This is why the Holy Spirit is our interpreter, our client that has us enrolled directly into God. If we ignore the messenger service that the messenger has given us, if we ignore the messages that the messenger has given us, we are missing a great deal of information. Yet this information is subtle, so we must clay po- must pay close attention to it. From there truth will be found. Those also with the Holy Spirit will hear it and receive it, while those without it will run for the hills in anger. It hurts, but this is why we recognize those speaking the word of God through our ever-growing discernment. So understand, truth may sting sometimes, but if it comes from a place of love, then know that it was intended to be a life buoy on the ocean and not a bullet from a gun. So let us remind ourselves about love quickly. Two of the great commandments tell us to love, love our neighbours as ourselves. Matthew 22.39 and Deuteronomy 6.5 Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. John 13.35 further confirms this. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love another. So if you seek to be a disciple of Christ, we have to love each other. That's what he's asked us to do. It's our commandments. He didn't ask us to fight and argue with each other. So love can sometimes be telling each other to be careful. Don't slip, my brother. Watch your step, my sister. For the devil is out there roaming like a lion, seeking anyone that he may devour. So please understand, today's video is not to prove right and wrong or to continue to pursue a specific notion or goal of self-interest. It is to remind us what the Bible says about faith and works and ensuring that we are bearing good fruits in the remaining days before us. This morning as I picked up the Bible before getting ready for the day, I was led to this scripture, Joshua 23. Joshua speaks to Israel. I was also given some scriptures on the garments for the priests in Exodus 39, which gave me some revelation on the colours of blue, purple and scarlet used on Aaron's coats, robe and embellishments. I'll save this for another video once I dig more into it. But this is exactly what I was looking into this morning, only to receive more confirmation on this very specific subject. What are the chances, right? That's how God works. Through his word. But my point is... I was led directly to the chapter that it, that is titled in the KJV, Keep God's Laws. This is how he talks to us. He can give us confirmation, correlation and even rebuke. But if we are sharing a word that requires further detail, in his love and grace the Holy Spirit will lead us into truth. 
After this on my way to taking my children to school, I was led to a video that I felt inclined to watch that randomly popped up. Towards the end, I was stunned when the man began to quote the following scriptures, confirming that I was discussing it, what I was discussing in yesterday's video about the once saved, always saved doctrine. I was reminded of this scripture, Romans 5.1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet we are justified by faith by the blood he shed for us. That was the reason he saved us and gave us the Holy Spirit. But if you seek a relationship of righteousness with God, then we must seek more, to do more, to build that relationship through the bearing of good fruits, by pleasing Him and keeping His word. As James 1.22 says, Be the doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It's very telling. Doers in Greek means poetis, which means finding creative ways to put the teachings of Jesus into practice. Then we see reference to the difference between disobeying even one of his commandments or keeping them all and what this means for us in heaven. Matthew 5.19 Therefore anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. He spells it out there. You know, it's He says if you... If you ignore even one of these commandments, the least of these commands, you know, even the simplest of commandments, and you teach others to do that as well, all right, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But if you obey my commandments, okay, and you you actually follow them, okay, and you keep them, he uses the word keep, then you'll be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So it's up to you. You know, what do you want to do? Do you want to please God as much as possible so that at the end of this race, you know, your rewards that are before you, you want to make sure that, you know, um, where you end up is, is where you're destined to be, His will. Okay, we can slip so easily here, guys, through our works. We can slip by just ignoring these small little things. And we have this ability to repent from these things. We have the ability to just say, I'm sorry, Father, I didn't understand. And, you know, repent and he will forgive us. And we carry on on that on that great path that we're on. Okay, so we have to call these things out. And, you know, I, you know, most of my channel hasn't been about calling things out. It's just been about gaining understanding. But it's so heavy on me to call this out because I know that this is incorrect. I know this once saved, always saved is false doctrine. And I know it's taking people in the wrong direction. So I can't let that slip without mentioning it. All right. Revelation 14, 12. Here is a call for the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And what have I been what have I been sharing in these Bible studies? Okay, the, the scriptures appear to be speaking to three groups of people. The Luke group is the bride of Christ. You know, do you want to be in the bride that keeps the commandments? Okay? That's who he's referring to, the bride of Christ. The ones that keep his commandments. The lukewarm church don't keep his commandments because they wouldn't be the lukewarm church. Okay? So, it's pretty simple. This is all about developing our righteousness and a righteous relationship with God. God loves righteousness, as we see in Psalm eleven seven. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Joshua 23, okay? This is the verse that I was given, this, the verses I was given this morning. I was given the whole chapter, but I'm just going to read these two. Um, because it, it cuts like a knife, all right? It cuts right to the point of it. Joshua 23, Joshua speaks to Israel, verse 14 to 16, reminds us what God brings if we obey him and if we disobey him in the way of our transgressions. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth, and ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass. Okay, something that's yet to happen. 
that as all good things are come unto you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has hath given you. When this, these evil things apply, only when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, he commanded you through these commandments, and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourself to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. Okay, so he's saying here specifically, you know, when you've served other gods and you've bowed before them, he'll bring these things upon you. But he's also saying he commanded you. How did he command you? He commanded you through his commandments. Why are they commandments? Because he commanded them of us, okay? So once you picked up your cross, once you were saved by faith, you become a child, you became one of his ch children of God. You were grafted in, okay? You were grafted in, but you're grafted in as a Gentile, all right? Subject to where you are. You're grafted in as a Gentile, and you are now, as we were saying in yesterday's, you, that law then becomes subject to you. Okay? The law becomes subject to you because you have been saved from your faith. Your faith and your works are tied together. Okay? Your faith and your works are tied together. So if you think you can just sit around and do nothing and mope and you know sin all, all day long and say, Hey, God save me, then you've got another thing coming. It doesn't work like that. Okay, So... Yes, you have salvation, and that's up to God. It's up to His mercy. But if you anger Him through your works and your deeds, and you're you become a sinner again, and you, you know, you you um, what's the word? Um, you backslide, right? Then you're going to find yourself having to repent. So that's what we're saying here, guys. Okay. I urge you to think on these things, brothers and sisters. Do not be swayed by tickling ear doctrines that ask you to recite merely a verse and profess to God. Any of you having been through some through repentance know that sometimes this process alone can take days, weeks, months, or for some maybe longer before we have rebuilt that broken bridge with God. I know myself it has taken many months to recover from my own sin that cost me dearly. God even allowed me to be deceived for a time to teach me how the evil one works so I could effectively defend against it in the future and for many other reasons too, okay? He allowed that to happen to me. I know he did. He is merciful. So as I said yesterday, if you spot someone teaching once saved, always saved, then be careful for they are leaving much of the scriptures out of this conversation. And cherry picking what they might want to use. This is how the devil works. It never sat right with me. Perhaps this is why now I'm feeling inclined to bring this up. Because this is for someone here. I don't know who, but if you need but if you hear this, I pray you come to your senses and I do this from love. Because I do not want to see anyone unknowingly upsetting God at this pivotal moment. God truly is wonderful, guys. He's so subtle. And I want to make sure that I am always being honest with you here. Sharing truth and any breadcrumbs of wisdom that I may glean. And everyone here has done the same. Let's keep each other in check, in truth, and always from the devices of the devil who would have us fall in these final moments. I love you all. And as I said yesterday, this message is for someone. So do not be convicted if you are doing the right thing. Be at peace with it and be at peace in love. Love Jesus for who he is, a friend, a father, our mighty king, our redeemer, our 12-star general. And he died for us. He bled for us. Let's follow his commandments and keep his word and show him that we love him for who he is, not what he can do for us, and for the truth that he has shared with us. God bless and Maranatha.